want to take you down uh, to that storm. What we are watching, again, this is that severe thunderstorm warning that we are looking at, uh, moving into parts of Cape Canaveral, Cocoa Beach for us early this morning. Rockledge, very heavy rainfall. And again, we had the possibility of some spin-ups. This is the same location on Thursday where we had a lot of the tornado warnings also issued. Uh, so getting you updated on this tornado warning, what we have going on, this tornado warning, again, moving towards the northeast, this storm very fast, 60 miles per hour. So this is not going to be a long-lived warning, uh, which is good, but we want to give you as much time to prepare. A lot of people now are going to be woken up to this, probably an alert coming in your phone if you live in Cape Canaveral, near Rockledge, near Cocoa, near Cocoa Beach, because of this, uh, this thunderstorm that's capable of producing a tornado. Moving towards the northeast, 60 miles per hour. So I want to flip over the velocity on this and see if we can see a couplet. And what that is is really when we start to see um, areas of red and green very tight to each other, that's when we start to see um, the rotation in the storm. So as we take a look, you can see just to the west of I-95, where that green and red are really close to each other, that's the rotation that the National Weather Service is seeing, and that's why they sparked this tornado warning that goes until 8.15 for us this morning. So that's another 45 minutes. I'd be surprised if we actually see this last for 45 minutes just to the, uh, just due to the fast movement of these storms. George Waldenberg, you can even see him over my shoulder here. He's with me now. Um, and we are tracking this storm. This is going to be getting closer towards the 520 Barton Boulevard, Rockledge, within the next few minutes. And again, this is a tornado warning that was just issued moments ago for parts of northern Brevard County, including Rockledge, Cocoa, Cape Canaveral, Cocoa Beach. Tracking it out for you, Rockledge, Footman, Angel City, and Cape Canaveral in about 5 to 15 minutes. We'll continue to see this storm system advance. Again, closer to I-95, actually crossing I-95 as we speak, US-1, and eventually the 520 and the beach line. Now on Thursday, again, a very similar location. We even had reports of a funnel cloud just to the west of Rockledge uh, with that last tornado warning. And we've been talking about this all week long, this potential for severe weather uh, within parts of central Florida last night and again this early morning hour. So what we're looking at here is the velocity readings. Coco, Rockledge, uh, you're in this tornado warning that goes until 815 because we have the severe thunderstorm capable of producing uh, a tornado uh, a tornado with me, excuse me. So as we take you, uh, Cocoa Beach, Cocoa, the 515 US 1, George is driving the radar for me. You can see I-95 right here and also 520 where we start to get these colors, the green and the red right next to each other. That's when we start to get some of that rotation. So as he zooms this out, you can see just to the west of Rockledge. If you live in Rockledge, if you live in Cocoa Beach, if you live in Cape Canaveral, uh, you're going to be wanting taking those uh, precautions, your tornado precautions. Uh, you're going to be woken up abruptly, get into an interior a room of your house away from any windows. And again, we have this tornado warning that's moving through parts of northern Brevard County, impacting Rockledge, Cape Canaveral, parts of Cocoa, Merritt Island until 815. George, what do you got? Well, right now we're just monitoring the storm as it moves through Rockledge, Cape Canaveral, Merritt Island. The tornado warning until 815. Uh, that's for the next 40 minutes or so. And um, Rockledge, Cape Canaveral, Merritt Island, this is heavy rain pushing through the area right now. We had a severe thunderstorm that moved through with the potential for damaging wind gusts. We've been tracking a few of these severe thunderstorms all morning. This is the first one that actually acquired a little bit of rotation, so some radar indicated rotation, and up to the point where we think, hey, okay, this has a potential for putting a tornado down at any moment or possibly has already done so. So because of that, the uh, National Weather Service went ahead and issued a tornado warning for Brevard County until 8.15 this morning. Now all we have to do, Cassie, is just mm -hmm. as you've been saying, is wait for the storm system to move right across Cape Canaveral, Merritt Island, Rockledge, and then move offshore. Once it does, then we'll be able to lift this tornado warning. And just as you've been saying, I don't think it'll take as long as 40 minutes, but right now that is the current uh, timeline on this tornado right. warning. Right, and, and George, you can see I put a little, just a, a ruler on this. We've been talking about these storms moving anywhere from 45 to 60 miles per hour all morning long. This storm specifically moving at about 60 miles per hour and from really where we're seeing that center of circulation just to the west of Rockledge to essentially our coastline to the northeast, that's about a 10-mile 
mile distance. So that puts us in about 10 minutes or even under that if it keeps the 60 mile per hour speed for us as we take you forward through our time. So uh, if you're just now joining us, we wanna keep you updated. You may be waking up abruptly in Rockledge and Cocoa Beach in Merritt Island uh, due to an alert coming on your phone. We talked a lot about this last night to have multiple ways to receive these warnings through the overnight and early morning hours because that we had the potential of severe weather and even tornadoes. So we've had a couple of severe thunderstorms early this morning. This is our first tornado warning for central Florida. We had some down towards uh, Fort Myers, Port Charlotte. Earlier this morning, we also had some down closer to, towards Lake Okeechobee. But what we're seeing is a little bit of rotation in this area just near Rockledge, crossing over I-95. Uh, so areas near Rockledge, Cocoa, Merritt Island, Cape Canaveral. If you are living in those locations, if you're visiting those locations and you're turning on the TV because you got the alert, this is when you're going to want to take those tornado precautions. Uh, wake up, get into an interior room that's typically a bathroom or a closet until this storm system passes. Um, because again, we continue to monitor no, these I strong storm these systems as we move you forward through the day. Now, here's a look at the loop of this as we go hour by hour. This is the last 25 minutes of this storm system. A lot of electrical intensity, heavy rainfall as well with this, and some gusty winds. But with the tornado warning goes until 8.15. I would not be surprised if we see it actually expire a little bit earlier just due to the fast movement of this storm system. But what I want to do for you is I want to flip it over to our velocity readings. And again, what we look for on this, I'm actually going to take off for you. It's a little cluttered. I'm going to take off those little warning boxes since this is the only tornado warning that we do have. But when we start to get areas of green and red very close to each other, that's the indicator that we look for on the radar to indicate the rotation. And that's what we're seeing as we make our way down into parts of, of northern Brevard County, just to the south of Rockledge. Again, we mentioned that rotation crossing over I-95 and then continuing to cross over US-1. It's eventually going to move over the intercoastal waterways. So, um, the Indian River, the Banana River as well, which when storms that have some type of rotation move over water, it's essentially a frictionless or much less friction surface uh, for these storms. So we could get water spouts out of them as well over both the Indian River and over the Banana River as well. So we're going to continue to monitor this storm system as we have this tornado warning in parts of northern Brevard County. This is going to include areas such as Rockledge, Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral. And as we get down a little bit closer, this will give you a better idea idea of what we're talking about. The beach line, if you take the beach line over ever to get on a cruise ship, that area is included in this tornado warning. So here you can see uh, Cape Canaveral and the port. Here's the 520. You can see Rockledge, Cocoa Beach. The city center is just shy uh, south of that tornado warning. Uh, but again, on the northern side of Cocoa Beach, getting more towards uh, a Cape Canaveral area and extending northward into uh, kind of government zones. This is not a lot of people live north of the Cape. Um, but that's where the NASA uh, complex is. You know, we have the SpaceX launch expected to go tonight, so we'll be watching closely there for some of the winds. Merritt Island also included in this warning uh, for the tornado warning that goes until 8.15 this morning. Again, what we're seeing is a little bit of broad rotation right now getting close towards the intercoastal right along 520 as we get into northern Brevard County. So if you live in Cape Canaveral, if you live in Cocoa Beach, if you live in Merritt Island even, now is the time to take those tornado precautions and head to an interior room, typically a bathroom or a closet, early this morning as we continue to track this dangerous storm. George. Thank you, Cassie, and uh, well done. Monitoring the uh, storm system here in Brevard County. This is what's responsible for the tornado warning, and it's kind of an erratic, jagged-looking storm setup. So we have a little bit of rotation, a little bit of organization here, enough for the National Weather Service to issue the tornado warning. Right now, we're seeing a little bit of lightning intensity pickup over Rockledge, over Merritt Island, and then this extends all the way to Cape Canaveral. The actual part of the storm that shows rotation is closer here to the Banana River and the Indian River, which is what Cassie was saying. Merritt Island, though, if you are in Merritt Island, especially between the National Wildlife Refuge, and then as you take Tropical Trail all the way down much of the island here, uh, just realize this is the place where you need to take cover right now, okay? So if you're waking up, you're hearing alerts come out of your phone, you're wondering what's going on, you're turning on Channel 9, you're uh, learning that you're under a tornado warning here in Merritt Island, in Cape Canaveral, and in Rockledge. This is the time that you get your... Okay, we're going to take a live shot at Port Canaveral in just a second. It's uh, on my right right here on your left. That's a live shot of Port Canaveral, also under the tornado warning. 
Uh, so if you're in this area, again, take the kids, take the pets, put them in the safe place of your house, stay away from windows. The safest place in your house is the lowest, most level. Interior room, like an interior hallway, an interior closet, an interior kitchen, just something uh, maybe with uh, an extra set of walls between that room and the exterior of the house. Of course, stay away from windows. Let the storm pass. We're going to get you through this. Take your cell phone with you. You can monitor the system, and you can monitor our coverage with the WFTV weather app. You can actually download that while you're in your safe place today. Now, uh, also looking at the storm again, heavy rain here in Rockledge. This is U.S. Highway 1 here underneath some heavy rain in Rockledge. Merritt Island, we have flares of lightning here, and uh, 528, so the beach line, all the way to Cape Canaveral. These areas are all under the tornado warning until 815. So that's this box. There's also a severe thunderstorm warning, and I want to zoom out here so you can kind of see what's going on. The severe thunderstorm warning is much bigger, so just realize that if you're in Melbourne, you're not under the tornado warning, you're under the severe thunderstorm warning, and if you're in Titusville also, you are not under the tornado warning warning, you're under the severe thunderstorm warning. But bottom line, if you're in Brevard County, just stay inside away from the windows and let these storms pass. We're really almost done, Cassie, mm -hmm. with this morning severe weather uh, event. And this is something we were expecting. And um, thankfully, it's not going to last a long time. But zooming in and kind of taking uh, our look at the Doppler velocity, Cassie, this is moving quickly. So right. this little slug of rotation here is kind of sheared out. Right. It looks rather broad at this point. Uh, what we would look for um, that would give us a strong indication of a tornado would be a couplet of red and green right next to each other, kind of like two little bullseyes. Right. And we're kind of seeing this sheared out at this point, and it's approaching Cape Canaveral. So I give it a few more minutes before it moves offshore, but obviously we'll stay wall to wall to make sure all of these people in Merritt Island and in Cape Canaveral. Also, get your kids and your pets to the safe place in case we have a water spout that's mm -hmm. about to move on shore, in case we get a brief tornado with a brief touchdown. We want to keep you ahead of this thing all the way until it moves offshore and it's no threat to anybody. Uh, again, quick storm track. I did the storm track a few minutes ago, but Merritt Island, obviously Cape Canaveral, Angel City, Port Canaveral, uh, Kennedy Space Center, all these areas underneath right. the tornado warning for the next few minutes. And, you know, George, uh, it, it's, it's interesting when you get this close to the coast and you start to run out of real estate for some of those tracks. I wanted to show you again where we're getting that broad area of circulation just between Merritt Island and Cape Canaveral. You can see just north of the 520, 528, more commonly known as the beach line as you head close to the port to get on a cruise ship. You can see I even have to shorten this ruler. I just made this a few moments ago. That's how fast this storm system is moving. It's moving at about 60 miles per hour. So again, from that area of rotation to the coastline, it's not even seven miles away. So we've got a few more minutes to continue to track this storm system. You can see the evolution of kind of that that the very kind of broad couplet that we had back west of Rockledge, and then moving it forward in time. Again, not a tight couplet, which we would would typically see in a much more defined situation uh, with a tornado, but definitely some rotation in this storm system and a rotating storm uh, doesn't need to spawn a tornado to do some damage. We've also had wind gusts this morning um, out of these storm systems, uh, anywhere from 50 to 55 miles per hour. So we have this severe thunderstorm warning in place for parts of Northern Brevard County. If we take a look at the bigger picture, really the meat of it is focused within this tornado warning. That's again, stretching from I-95 to our our coastline, but the center of rotation has pushed past Rockledge, has pushed past I-95. Uh, so really, as we get past this intercoastal, the Indian River Lagoon, um, and as we get over towards Cape Canaveral, that's more where we're highlighting it. Once we get north of the Cape, we start to really get into areas that are... Um, owned by the government. You can see some of the launch pads there underneath when some of the rain moves off. We're talking over near uh, NASA and the Kennedy Space Center. So Merritt Island, Cape Canaveral, and for the beaches, Playa Linda Beach, if that's a, a place where you're morning walking, I wouldn't be heading there early this morning as, again, we have this tornado warning in place until 8.15. So let's put a track on this. I'm going to stop the loop so we can track it forward for you. Again, it's really not going to show us a whole lot of communities as we are starting to get kind of into very rural territory 
territories, but we're talking 50, 60 miles per hour. So Cape Canaveral, in about two minutes, you'll be seeing that center of rotation getting closer to you. And like George was mentioning, if you live in Merritt Island, if you live uh, near Cape Canaveral, uh, and between Merritt Island and Cape Canaveral, you're definitely going to be wanting to take those tornado precautions right now as we have that active tornado warning in place um, until 8.15 for us early this morning. But again, George, we mentioned that we'll most likely see this expire before 8.15. Yeah, I think this is about to move offshore. Mm -hmm. The rotation is about to move offshore in a few minutes. And what I've done is we have another radar. We have different graphics showing the radar, the rain, the storms. And I've kind of isolated one product. We call it our shear rate. And it's a way of kind of isolating what Cassie was describing as that rotational couplet in just one little product here. And it's this green and red contour. And what it does is it kind of highlights that shear rate. In other words, where the winds are changing. And that's what we focus on right now with this. And with a quick time lapse, we can kind of see how that... Uh that uh, rotation rate change, or basically where the tornado may have been, where it tracked. And you can see it kind of developed here in Rockledge. Uh, this is I-95 here, so near the I-95 area of Brevard County, tracking over Barton Boulevard, Huntington Lane, Merle Road, and then A1A and Rockledge Drive before moving over the Intracoastal Waterway. Again, we continue with the tornado warning for Brevard County until 8.15 for the Rockledge area, Merritt Island, and Cape Canaveral. This is about to move offshore, but you can see the track of the damaging or the most dangerous part of that storm. So moving over the waters, then moving over Merritt Island here. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, I see Footman right here and uh, some of these uh, neighborhood streets here on the south side of the island as you head toward Angel City. The track of that rotation has moved over there as well. And then back over the intercoastal waterway. Right now, it's over Port Canaveral and Cape Canaveral. So if we want to take that live look of Port Canaveral, we can get another look of actually where the part of the storm is with the rotation. Kind of tough to see, a little dark there. We can see rain, but uh, Cassie, that's really pretty much all I can see. Right, that's all you can see. I'm even taking a look at the Cocoa Beach camera to see. I've, I've shifted our viewpoint Wonderful. to see if we can uh, see it towards the north. I want to see if that was a notification of them. Uh, oh, it's an, a cancellation of the tornado watch for Flagler County. So the tornado warning in Brevard County continues. Something that I was noticing, George, when you were talking, there's this little pocket of green. I actually switched it. We have a couple of products where we look at uh, the velocity and the wind speeds there. I was looking at storm relative velocity. This is just looking at velocity. And there's this little ball of green. Uh, a few moments ago, I'm actually going to back it up in time. You can see that the green is just a little bit brighter here just north of Cape Canaveral where we're seeing again, a little bit of that rotation. This is where we've been watching. Uh, the difference in color still exists. Uh, it's just not as strong for us. And you can see here, our director is putting up Cocoa Beach. This is on the left-hand side of your screen, a live shot. And again, this is looking more towards the north and towards the northwest. So over the intercoastal waterways, back towards the 520 and towards the 528. But again, we're going to continue this tornado warning as it starts to move uh, just north of Cape Canaveral. Also, just within the last few minutes when George was speaking, I was taking a look at the National Weather Service feed. There is a, a reported wind gust over at Kennedy Space Center, 54 miles per hour. So again, we're getting up there when we talk about the winds. A lot of these thunderstorms this morning have already produced winds 45 to 55 miles per hour. But if you're just now joining us at 750, we have a tornado warning for parts of northern Brevard County. It started back just to the west of Rockledge, areas of Rockledge. You're pretty much in the clear. I want to turn it back over to the reflectivity so you can see where the storm is now. You can see areas along I-95, Rockledge, again, kind of mainland Brevard County. You're in the clear from this tornado warning. But still, as we start to cross over the beach line and cross over the 520 causeway there, we are still dealing with this tornado warning. And it looks as though the tightest rotation that we have seen is just north of Cape Canaveral, between Cape Canaveral and Merritt Island. But these storms are moving very fast, 60 miles per hour to the north and east. So we're going to continue to see this lift and eventually brush off our coastline, hopefully within the next few minutes. George. Yeah, Cassie, we are so close to that happening. Mm -hmm. Actually, I actually zoomed in. This is Cape Canaveral right here. This is Port Canaveral. And then this is where the Cape actually juts out over land. So this is where we have all the launch complexes. And where Cassie pointed out uh, the rotational couplet, uh, if you will, what's left of it is right about here. So we're mm -hmm. oh so close for the part of the storm that's showing rotation to move offshore. And another thing that we look at uh, is 
we look at lightning, and it is not uncommon for lightning to kind of flare up near this rotational couplet. It kind of signifies an increase in that updraft. That updraft is kind of the key to both the rotation, but it also aids in lightning production. So when you see these synced up like this, that's another indication that, hey, okay, we have a rotational couplet and we have a lightning flare up. So another reason why a tornado warning may be issued without actual visual confirmation, but uh, radar indicated tornado. And so this rotational couplet, again, just about to move offshore. It's right over the launch complexes. I, in Fort I had him switch this for you because, George, okay. look at that. The green and the red couplet right at the tip north of Cape Canaveral. Okay, and we are using I know, I switched radar. your graphic. No, yes, no, that's this fine. Is that's, yeah. the, yes, this is early warning Doppler 9HD, but look how close to the coastline we are with that rotation. Right about to move offshore, and yeah. that's important that we change radar. So now we're using our own radar source, the radar source that you'll only see here on Channel 9. Uh, I, uh, and Cassie changed the mode, so this is showing... Uh, winds coming back and winds going out at this point. And so right on the Cape at this point, the tornado warning, and uh, it'll move offshore, and then we'll likely see this thing canceled as soon as it moves far enough offshore. Exactly. And But, we're, but we still have the tornado warning we going. We do still have the active tornado go, warning going. Okay, all right. So we continue. If you're in Cape Canaveral, you're still under the tornado warning. Okay, it looks like the rotation has moved northeast of you, but it's still a good idea, still being close enough in Cape Canaveral to keep your kids and your pets in a safe spot. Uh, you know, just wait for the storm to leave. We still have lightning in the area. You've already done all the precautions. You woke up. Your phone's may have gone off and scared you as you were trying to wake up this morning. Maybe you're taking the dog out for a walk and you got an alert on your phone and you had to scramble back home. But go ahead and stay inside in Cape Canaveral, even though the rotation has moved off to the northeast. Stay inside in uh, North Cocoa Beach area. Wait for the storm to pass and then we'll let you come out. And uh, most of the day is actually going to be fine today. It'll be windy, but we're going to dry out and we're going to completely change the weather pattern. Mm -hmm. We are going to take all of these storms out of the forecast for almost a week. We won't have to deal with it. This, but this is kind of the last hurrah. This may be our only tornado warning in the morning. We're not quite done, but this is really our main guy in town here. This is a tornado warning for Brevard County. It's, uh, it was in effect till 8.15. We think that uh, we'll get a cancellation early, and then we can uh, go back to our newscast. But uh, right now, the rotating couplet right here, moving off of the point of Cape Canaveral, and uh, we're making sure you know exactly what's going on uh, with this tornado warning that is still in effect for Brevard County between Ex Rockledge, Merritt Island, and Cape Canaveral. Exactly. And as we move forward through the remainder of this morning, we've been talking all morning long that really our big threat for severe weather for Central Florida goes uh, from now until about 9 o'clock. Brevard County, you're going to be the last to see some of the, uh, the rough weather, and that's where we have these severe thunderstorms. I want to give you a little bit bigger picture because down in parts of southern Brevard County, just a far little clip it, uh, was in a severe thunderstorm warning for that batch down closer towards Fort Pierce as well. We also have a line of some downpours, a couple of lightning strikes that will also head towards our beach once we're done uh, with this batch of rain and storms. You can also see that little uh, wind icon from the Kennedy Space Center showing up. That's that 54 mile per hour gust uh, that we talked about just moments ago. So taking you down Cape Canaveral, just south of Merritt Island, is where we continue to track this strong storm, the severe thunderstorm storm that initiated this tornado warning just about 20 minutes ago. Um, it's moving off towards the Cape, really uh, right as the Cape juts out, as George was mentioning. Uh, that's where we are seeing some of the best rotation in this thunderstorm. It's about to be pulling offshore. The warning itself goes until 8.15, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see them uh, expire this a little bit earlier. The National Weather Service may hold on to it until we get this batch of this thunderstorm completely offshore as well once we get down towards Port and Port Port Canaveral, Cape Canaveral, and just on the north side of Cocoa Beach, uh, just because this is a pretty dangerous storm. Regardless of the rotation, we could see winds 60 miles per hour, a lot of heavy rainfall with this, and a lot of active lightning as well. But we're going to continue to track this pretty quickly to the northeast at 60 miles per hour. So I want to flip it over to our early warning Doppler 9 velocity and see what we have. If there is any type of rotation... I'm actually going to flip off these boxes. It gets it a little cluttered. Um, as we get down a little bit closer, again, where we were mentioning earlier, uh, that couplet, there's signs still of just a limited rotation. But again, this is offshore. 
you can see it almost right underneath that, that red line of our box where we're getting kind of those colors right next to each other. Uh, so areas just north of Cape Canaveral where we had this rotation with the severe thunderstorm pushing offshore and will continue to push offshore here over the next few minutes. The uh, warning officially goes until 8.15. I 15, haven't, yeah, 8.15, was, I'm so shocked that yeah. they haven't expired it yet. Yeah, I actually was just in the chat room. This is a chat room that we monitor the National Weather Services, new data coming out, emergency managers are in there and storm reports uh, come out on there. And right now, it looks like they'll continue the tornado warning for now, even though this is mainly rural areas northeast of uh, uh, Cape Canaveral, and now the rotation is pushing offshore. And this, what I'm showing you right here, I know you, we show you a lot of different things with radar. It's, it's really, really quite spectacular, all the things radar can do, but uh, we have to explain each one. This is a swath. This is basically a streak showing where that possible tornado, essentially where that rotation track went. Okay, all right, okay. So uh, we're gonna check in with Carla. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, all right, a little background uh, uh, yeah, football yeah, me here, right? Yeah, asking questions. All right, yeah, I'm talking <laughs> to the producers, the directors. But uh, looking at Brevard County, this is the streak where the rotation actually tracked right across Brevard County. So at any point, there may have been a water spout or a tornado this morning as this thunderstorm rolled through. Remember, you have a bigger thunderstorm, and underneath it, you get a small-scale rotation, and that small-scale rotation is what can scour and cause damage underneath the much larger thunderstorm. So the thunderstorm was very large here in northern Brevard County, and then this area of rotation, it basically started, or basically moved across mm -hmm. I-95 in Rockledge, and then it moved across Rockledge Drive and A1A, just south of the center of Rockledge. Then it moved over the uh, Indian River Lagoon here, part of the Intracoastal Waterway. Then it moved over Merritt Island, and then it moved over Angel City. Then it moved back over water as it approached Cape Canaveral, and it went right over Port Canaveral, right over the port, and then it kind of skimmed right here over the Cape Canaveral area, and now it moved offshore. We can, Even though it moved offshore, we still have the tornado warning that remains in effect until 8.15, so we'll keep these uh, tornado precautions going, particularly for the north section of Cocoa Beach and Cape Canaveral areas here, anywhere all the way up toward the launch complexes here of Kennedy Space Center and uh, the Space Coast here and Cape Canaveral. Again, the main part of the storm that's showing uh, signs of rotation has moved offshore, but we still have thunderstorms in the area. We still have lightning. You can see a few lightning strikes here near the Cape, so we continue with the tornado warning until 8.15. I can hear the alerts going off in the chat room. Uh, on my right, on your left, I'm looking at uh, Port Canaveral, uh, looking wet but and cloudy, obviously, as we start to see some sunlight here. And that's this area right here. So this is the Port Canaveral area. That camera is actually on the top of Fish Lips, and we're looking to the east, so we're looking this direction. So at this point, we're on the backside of the storm that's showing rotation with this live view that you're seeing, the wet lens, the dark gray clouds. But in the Port Canaveral, Cape Canaveral, and Cocoa Beach area, while it may be raining and storming and thundering, the part of the storm with rotation is moving offshore, okay? So at this point, you're on the backside of it, but still stay inside, uh, we'll keep you monitored with this tornado warning situation and see if we eventually get a cancellation. And uh, it looks like uh, we're seeing, Cassie's monitoring the radar over there. Right. There looks like there's two different areas here where we may have a little bit of rotation. Right, well, and you can see it just, uh, this little appendage, as we like to call them. Yes, this little hook. Uh, but again, this is offshore, so I'm still very shocked that the National Weather Service hasn't expired it. I actually just sent them a note asking if they were going to expire it early. Um, and I, I heard some digging. I thought it was going to be the expire, but they actually issued the National Weather Service is in charge of areas south of us as well. Mm -hmm. uh, coming out of Melbourne, you can see there's a tornado warning coming right off of Lake Okeechobee, uh, getting closer towards Fort Pierce. But for us actively, we head up into parts of Brevard County. Uh, we had this tornado warning up, up from Rockledge all the way towards north of Cocoa Beach, towards Cape Canaveral and Merritt Island for us. Uh, that's expected to go until 8.15. We can see just within this polygon, this red box, that's typically the warned area. Um, we actually barely even have any rain except for this little tip. And George, honestly, I'm comfortable uh, stopping our tornado coverage because the threat looks to be offshore for us. We just have some scattered showers and storms uh, back behind it. So I'm going to send it back to Carla. Uh, we're going to continue to resume our normal 
normal morning newscast for you. All those, this warning goes until 8.15. It looks as though the threat up in parts of northern Brevard County is really wound down for us. And we'll let you know we'll break in if we see anything other than that um, uh, across parts of Brevard County or southern Brevard County as these storms continue to progress. Carla. All right.